I wonder if I'll be able to do something like that with this system. The Sony BVE-910 video editing system is a user-friendly, multifunctional system. Different audio and video sources are controlled by the system to ensure accurate assembly of sounds and images. To get started and to understand the use of the system, certain steps need to be followed. Insert the security key and turn it clockwise. This automatically turns on the central processing unit or CPU for short. When the security lock has been turned on, the Sony BVE-910 CPU and user console automatically turns on. Next, turn on the Sony Edit System data monitor. This monitor gives all the editing information to the user. To the left of the user console and data monitor is the Sony BVS-3100 effects switcher. The switcher is automatically powered up when the system is turned on. Be sure the button marked Editor Enable is lit. On the right of the user console and data monitor is the Sony MXP290 audio mixer. This mixer controls the sound levels of all audio inputs. The power button is located in the upper right corner. The audio amplifier must also be turned on. This will turn on the editing room audio speakers. On the left side of the system are the three VCRs. Two of these VCRs are playback only. These are the Sony BVU-900 and the Sony BVU-920DT, both of which are capable of reading SMPTE timecode. The third VCR is a Sony BVU-950 record machine, which is capable of both reading and recording SMPTE timecode. When turning on the VCRs, be sure they are in the remote mode. This allows their operation to be controlled by the user console. On the upper portion of the editing system, there are four video preview monitors. Three of these monitors are designed to display the output of each VCR. The fourth preview monitor is used for an auxiliary source, such as a remote studio camera. The large monitor in the center is the program monitor. This shows the output of the program bus effects switcher and what is going to be recorded by the record VCR. The vector scope is turned on and is used to monitor color reproduction, while the waveform monitor is used to monitor video signal levels and sync. For more information about the uses of these monitors, consult the operation manual or the department engineer. The time base correctors are used to synchronize various video signals and act as a video equalizer. Here's a quick review of how to get started. Get the key from the tech room and unlock the security panel. Power up the CPU and power panel. This automatically powers up the user control panel and the effects switcher. Turn on all VCRs and be sure they are in remote. If there are any problems, please get the department engineer or consult the manual. some powerful equipment. But what is SMPTE time code? The Society of Motion Picture and Television Engineers, an organization of professionals, has set up these guidelines for time code. Time code is a labeling system which gives each frame of video a unique name and number. Time code reads in the following manner, hours, minutes, seconds, and frames up to 24 hours. With black and white video, the signal actually ran at 30 frames per second. However, with the introduction of color, the signal ran slightly slower at 29.97 frames per second. Therefore, in an attempt to match time code time with real clock time, two types of time code evolved, non-drop frame and drop frame. 
With non-drop frame, each frame is numbered consecutively, and each frame is present 0 to 29. However, this caused a difference with clock time. Since color runs at 29.97 frames per second, after every hour of non-drop frame time code, the counter will be off by 108 frames, or 3 seconds and 18 frames. In order to simulate real time, drop frame time code will skip two frame numbers every minute, except the 10th minute. No actual pictures are dropped, only the frame numbers 00, zero and 01 are skipped. As a result, drop frame time code and clock time match exactly because 108 frame numbers are dropped every hour. Computer-assisted editing has many advantages. Since the system is PC-based, much of the preliminary work can be done offline, cutting costs and online time considerably. Computer-assisted editing is also frame accurate and repeatable with virtually no system errors. Besides the Tape Master, one of the beneficial products of this system is the Edit Decision List, or EDL, which is an exact log of the edits you have chosen. Now that you understand the powers of SMPTE timecode, you are ready to begin the editing process. First, you must have a black and coated tape to edit onto. That is, timecode must be recorded with video black so that the system has something to lock onto when recording. Begin by packing the tape. Insert the tape into the VCR and press fast forward until the end, followed by rewinding the tape to its beginning. This will ensure that the tape is taut when recording. Meanwhile, go to the BVS 3100 switcher and set the bus to black. Now return to the record VCR and locate the dial menu switch. Set it to dial menu. Press and release the motion control knob to enter the set mode. The red hour numbers should begin flashing. Rotate the motion control knob to change each section of the time code. The menu should read 58 minutes and 30 seconds. This is the house standard and will allow for bars, tone, and slate before your program. To change the time code setting, press and hold the data button located underneath the display. Rotate the motion control knob to the desired number and release the data button to set. Move to the next display by rotating the motion control knob and repeat the previous step. When you have completed setting the time code, press the set button and the arrows above the motion control knob should flash momentarily. Press and release the motion control button to exit setup. Locate the dial menu switch and return it to TC for time code. You are now ready to record time code onto your tape. Note that this will completely erase audio and video on your tape, so be accurate in your tape selection. Begin recording by pressing the record and play on the VCR. The counter display should begin rolling as the deck records. You are now ready to begin editing on the Sony BVE-910 edit system. Okay, I can turn the system on and I can black a tape, but what are all these buttons for? Welcome to Module 3, the functions of the data monitor and user console. In this module, you will learn the four key areas on the data monitor, the functions of the user console button, and the correspondence between them. This is the data monitor. It is where all of your edit information is displayed. There are four key areas of the data monitor. The first is the active area. This will display the type of edit and effect that you are currently working on, as well as the delay value of the audio or video and the transition time of the current effect. The lower part of this section displays the status of each VCR. Edit in and out points, edit duration time, Color framing status and GPI trigger points are also displayed. You may want to consult your Sony BVE-910 operation manual for detailed information of these functions. The next area is called the message area. This section displays the message from the keyboard 
and where dialogue between the editor and the edit system is shown. The next section is the edit data list area, also known as the EDL area. This area displays a list of all previously made edits and stores it in memory. With the Sony BVE-910, it is possible to store data for up to 998 edits in memory. The bottom section of the monitor is the function button area. The function of these buttons will change according to what items are available. There are eight different choices, F1 through F8. And there are four key areas of the data monitor. They are again, the active area, the message area, the EDL area, and the function area. This is the user console. It is the control center for the BVE-910. There are 10 button clusters grouped according to functions. We will go over the cluster from right to left and top to bottom. The first cluster is automatic control. These are the keys that perform the automatic queuing, previewing, and recording sequences on the VCRs. These are the auxiliary buttons. Many of the special functions of the BVE-910 are accessed through these buttons. This is the scratch pad section. This area contains a numeric pad and buttons for the edit list management functions. These are the function buttons. These buttons correspond to the function button area of the data monitor that we discussed earlier. The next group of buttons are the effect type. This is where the desired effects such as wipes, dissolves, and cuts are chosen. This is the edit mode selection group of buttons. Video and up to four channels of audio for insert editing can be selected here. The time mark buttons are used to read a current time code of a tape and mark it as an in or out point. The all stop button is the panic button. When pressed, it stops all operations of the BVE-910. The shift button is used to activate the secondary functions of the keyboard buttons. The source selection buttons are used to choose from various sources that the BVE-910 is capable of controlling. In the manual control section, all VCRs can be remotely controlled. The motion control knob is used to jog or shuttle the tapes. Again, in review, the 10 button groups are the auto control section, the auxiliary function buttons, the scratch pad section, the function buttons, the effect type buttons, the edit mode buttons, the time mark buttons, the all stop and shift buttons, the source selection buttons, the manual control section. Now let's look at how some of the individual buttons work and their effect on the data monitor. Let's begin in the automatic control section with the preview button. This button is used to preview an edit before it is recorded. The record button is used to record the edit just previewed. Notice the changes in the active section of the data monitor when the buttons are pressed. This section shows all of the edit information that is being previewed and or recorded including the in and out points of both record and playback VCRs. Once record has been pressed and the edit is complete, the information of the edit just performed appears on the EDL section of the data monitor. Here in the auxiliary function group, we have the set in, set out, and set duration buttons. The set in and set out buttons are used to enter specific time code numbers for the in and out points of edits. To set the in points of playback VCR number one, for example, the set in button is pressed while player one is selected and the desired time code number is entered. To set the out point, the set out button is pressed and the desired time code number for the out point of the edit is entered. The set duration button is used to set a specific duration for in and out points on the selected VCR or auxiliary source. To set a five second duration on player one, select player one, enter five, zero, zero, and press set duration. At this point, it is necessary to understand how to access commands that are shown on the fronts of the keys. They are accessed by pressing and holding the shift key while pressing the desired key with the command on the front. Thus, to access the function button F5, press Shift and F1. The next group of buttons to examine is the function group. These buttons allow the editor to perform many different functions on the BVE-910. In the set duration mode, 
the F1 button activates the command FIT fit, as you can see on the data monitor. Here in the init menu, the F3 button will change the time code from drop frame to non-drop frame, or vice versa. Thus, the function buttons allow the editor to perform different functions at different times, and the actions these buttons perform are always displayed in the function section of the data monitor. Before moving on, it is important to briefly examine the scratch pad section of the user console and its correspondence to the message area of the data monitor. The buttons in this section allow various information to be given to the BVE-910. The number buttons allow the time code numbers, duration times, and other numbers to be input. These numbers appear in the message area of the data monitor. The enter button will enter any information typed on the scratch pad to the BVE-910. Until this button is pressed, information shown in the scratch pad section means nothing. Thus, when using set in to enter a time code number as an endpoint, the number is first typed into the scratch pad using the number buttons. And when the desired number is displayed, enter is pressed to set the number. As stated earlier in this module, the effect type buttons are used to set the type of transition desired for an edit. The default mode is cut. To set a dissolve, press the dissolve button. To set a wipe, press the wipe button. The data monitor will then ask from and to. Sources must be entered for each of these questions. Once sources are entered, a transition length must then be entered from the number buttons. Entering 3-0 will set a 30-frame transition. Entering 3-0-0 will set a 3-second transition because the BVE-910 automatically inserts a colon after each two numbers are entered, corresponding to frames, seconds, minutes, and hours. For information about setting wipe and dissolve patterns, and for information about keys, consult the BVE-910 manual. The next group of buttons to examine are the edit mode buttons. These buttons, V and A1 through A4, are used to choose which sources will be inserted into the edit. Selecting V will insert video only, and selecting A1 and V will insert video and audio channel 1 only. These buttons can be selected separately or together in any combination that is needed. Notice the changes on the data monitor. Audio channels 3 and 4 are not usable unless the playback and record VCRs have these channels. The time mark buttons are used to mark in and out points for edits. However, unlike the set in and set out buttons, the time mark buttons do not require numbers to be entered from the number buttons. These buttons mark the in and out points at the exact place where the buttons are pressed. Pressing mark in marks the in point with the time code number that is displayed on the screen, like this. Mark out marks the out point in the same manner. Mark constant stores a time code number that an editor may want to use repeatedly during an editing session. Here, next to the shift button is the all stop button. This is the panic button. When pressed, it will stop all VCRs and make a clean edit out if pressed during the edit mode. The next group of buttons to understand is the source selection group. These buttons select the source that the editor will be working on. When setting in and out points, effect sources, and any other actions for a particular VCR, these buttons, RVCR, P1, P2, P3, and Auxiliary 1 and 2, must first be pressed to select a source. The final group of buttons to understand is the manual control section. In explaining this area, the use of the motion control knob will also be covered. The manual control buttons, play, still, rewind, and fast forward will perform their listed functions on whatever deck has been selected from the source selection buttons. These buttons are basically remote control buttons for the buttons on the front of the VCR, and their effects are shown here in the active area of the data monitor. The motion control knob allows the editor to move forward or backward through a video at one of two speeds, jog or shuttle. Using jog will move through the selected source one frame at a time. Selecting shuttle will move through the video at a speed that increases as the knob is turned further away from the center. That concludes our explanation of the functions 
of the many buttons within each button group and their correlations on the data monitor. Located between the playback monitors and the Sony BVS-3100 video switcher are the Tektronix 1420 vector scope and the 520 waveform monitor, which work in conjunction with the above Sony BVR-55 time-based corrector remote or TBCs. The TBC signal processing hardware is actually installed inside the source video decks. The BVU-920 and the BVU-900. The TBC rectifies incoming video signals, making sure your source tapes sync up with one another. In other words, the TBC strips the sync from the incoming video signal, digitizes the active video portion, and holds it in memory. It then reads it out at the proper rate with a clean sync generated by the internal sync generator. Visually, each unit looks the same, but have diverse hardware differences since the two VTRs are in fact different models. The unit on the left controls adjustments on the BVU-920, while the unit on the right makes any necessary changes on the BVU-900. The first two switches on the TVCs are for noise reduction and freeze frame. This is where the two units differ. The unit on the right is equipped with an optional feature allowing the user to utilize the noise reduction and freeze frame on the unit itself. By turning on the blue only switch on the program monitor and turning on the noise reduction, you can enhance the picture quality by choosing position one or two. Freeze frame allows the user to freeze either a frame or a field when you press the freeze frame button. Freezing a frame will obtain a high quality picture while freezing a field will help in stabilizing a moving image. Excellent. Take note that the tape continues to roll while using the freeze frame function. The unit on the left does not have the noise reduction or freeze frame capability. By using the dynamic tracking switch on the unit and the still button on the manual control section of the editor's console, the BVU-920 can freeze frame. For the best quality picture, set the dynamic tracking or DT switch to the VAR position. To get to know how to use the TBC remotes, vector scope, and waveform monitor, We'll start by inserting a tape with bars into each of the source VTRs. At the moment, we are feeding video black, which is being generated from the switcher. This color measurement will be used later when we move on to the waveform monitor. Even with black being fed, there is a measurement. Notice the burst pointing to the left. Upon closer inspection, you'll notice it ends at three lines, which cross the line it is on. This is where your black level should be. First, Move each switch under the video, chroma, setup, and hue control knobs out of the preset position. When shooting, it is important to record bars at the beginning of your tape for at least a minute in order to make any necessary adjustments without having to constantly rewind the tape. Next, choose which source VTR you wish to adjust first. We will start with the BVU-920, which is P1 on the editor's console and VTR1 on the switcher. The BVU-900 is P2 and VTR2. Now, using the editor's console, push play. Let's first look at the vector scope on the left. The main job of the vector scope is to monitor the color reproduction accuracy of the source videotape. When fed the bar signal, the vector scope outputs a six-pointed star. Each point of the star is a color vector. The end of each point of the star, or burst, should be pointing to one of the colors on the reticule the term for the scope screen, which resembles a 360-degree grid. The primary colors are red, blue, and green, while the secondary colors, magenta, cyan, and yellow, are also represented. All colors are shown here on the vector scope's grid. In each area of color, there is a square box for the burst to be directed towards. In the middle of those boxes is a smaller box, which is the ideal point for the color burst to occur in. Turning the hue knob on the TBC clockwise or counterclockwise turns the color vector in the same direction 
And as you can see, this also affects the preview monitor above. In this case, the ideal situation is to direct the burst into the middle of the box with the hue control, putting the colors into phase. If the burst does not reach the absolute middle, do not be discouraged because there's more to cover. The level adjusting knobs, video for luminance, chroma for color level, and setup for black level are more easily explained while demonstrating the waveform monitor. Just as the vector scope is used to pinpoint color levels, the waveform monitor will show your luminance levels. To make it easier to understand what each part of the video signal means, let's briefly look at a diagram. Each color matches up to the waves on the monitor. The waveform is an electrical recreation of the bars from the source tape and projected onto the preview screen. We'll start by checking where the toggle switches on the left need to be for the correct reading. The response switch should be set on flat and the sweep switch should be on 2H. The bright lines on the monitor are the video or luminance levels. The shading below the bright lines are the chroma levels. Where should these levels be? The waveform monitor has measurements on the left side of its reticule. The top left side reads from 100 at the top to minus 40 at the bottom. You should first begin by establishing your baseline, which is at the zero level, by using the knob marked with arrows pointing up and down on the unit. Next, using the setup knob, adjust the black pedestal line to the 7.5% mark, which is between the two parallel lines. Then, adjust the video level so it is at the 100 line. And finally, turn the chroma knob so it fills the area up to the bottom of the video level. You must go through this procedure each time you change tapes in your source machine. One final note, the adjustment screws marked sync phase and SC phase control the delay of the sync due to the length of the cables between the main studio and the editing system. Only a qualified technician can make any adjustments to these controls. I wonder, how does the signal get from the playback deck through all these components to the record machine? The signal pathway through the Sony BDE 910 edit system begins at either of the playback decks. We'll begin by tracing the path of the video signal first. Begin by pressing V on the user console so that the video signal will be recorded on the record tape. Now you're ready to record. Using playback one, insert a videotape and push play on the user console. Let's look at a diagram to simplify the pathway now that the tape is rolling. The video signal travels from the playback deck to the remote time-based corrector or TBC controls. In relation to the Sony BVE 910 system, the signal will travel from the BVU 920 DT to the TBC controls. The signal can be monitored at this point by the waveform monitor and vector scope. The TBC has several correction control knobs that you may adjust. However, do not touch the calibration knobs on the TBC. By looking at this diagram, the video signal pathway splits from the TBC and travels along two separate paths simultaneously. One signal travels from the TBC to a preview monitor while the other is sent from the TBC to the video switcher. Once the video signal reaches the switcher, it splits again. One signal travels from the switcher to the program monitor. The other video signal heads from the switcher directly to the BVU950 record machine and ends. Now let's review the video signal pathway. First, the signal leaves the playback deck and travels to the TBC controls and is monitored by the waveform and vector scope. Then the signal splits. One signal travels to the video switcher and the other to a preview monitor. From the video switcher, the signal splits once again. One travels to the program monitor and the other signal travels to the record deck and ends. Good. Now I understand how the video signal goes through the BVE 910. Now that I've got the video pathway straightened out, what about the audio pathway? 
To trace the audio signal pathway, begin by pressing A1 and A2 on the user console so that the audio will be recorded on the BVE 950 record deck. Next, you need to adjust the levels on the playback deck VU meters so that the audio levels are in synchronization with the tone recorded on the tape. The audio signal now leaves the playback deck and travels directly to the Sony MXP290 audio console. On the audio console, you must raise the red master fader bars to 7. Next, raise the source fader bar so that the VU meter reads 0. This makes the audio signal normalize with the output of the playback deck. Now the signal splits and leaves the audio console. One signal travels and ends at the record deck, while the other signal passes through the crown amplifier and speakers, where the signal can be adjusted for your listening preference. The audio signal that ends at the record deck must be adjusted. The VU meter should read zero. This completes the audio signal pathway. Now let's review the audio signal pathway with a diagram. First, the signal leaves the playback deck and travels to the audio console. Then the signal splits. One signal travels to the amplifier and through the speakers. The other signal travels directly to the record deck and ends. Finally, don't forget to adjust the audio signal level at the playback deck, the audio console, the crown amp for listening preference, and on the BVE 950 record deck. Good. Now I understand how the audio signal travels through the Sony BVE 910. I'll be able to do something with this system. Editing on the Sony BVE 910 is simple. This module will demonstrate basic cuts, dissolves, and wipes. To begin editing, one must start with a black time-coded tape. Insert this tape into the record deck. Press rewind to ensure tape is at the beginning. Now press the RVTR button on the source selection bus on the user console. Use the motion control knob to shadow the record tape from 0 to 15 seconds. This will give the machine time to pre-roll. At this point, record one minute of color bars and tone on the record tape. Insert your first source tape into playback VTR1. Now you're ready to choose the type of edit you want. Our first example will be the basic cut. Press cut on the effects type bus. When editing, you can choose video and or audio recording. The data monitor will indicate your video audio selection and the type of edit to be performed, in this case, a cut. The next step in performing a cut is to inform the BVE 910 where the edit should begin and end. To locate the endpoint on the record tape, select the record machine by pressing RVTR button. Now shuttle your record tape using the motion control knob. Press the Mark In button when you have located the point where the edit should begin. This endpoint will appear on the data monitor. Now press the P1 button to select player VTR1. Your source tape should be in player VTR1. Shuttle through your source tape using the motion control knob. Locate the beginning of the edit and mark this point by pressing the Mark In button. This endpoint will appear on the data monitor. If you choose to set out points, shuttle through the tapes and use the mark out button. However, out points are not necessary, as you can stop the edit at any time using the red record button. You can now preview the edit by pressing the preview button. If you're ready to make the edit, press the red record button, and the edit will be performed. Dissolves and wipes. While a cut only requires two tapes, a record tape and a source tape, dissolves and wipes require three tapes. That is a record tape and two source tapes. Insert these tapes into the VTRs. Press the dissolve button on the effects bus of the user console. An icon will appear on the data monitor indicating that you have chosen to perform a dissolve. In this example, we are dissolving from our source tape 1 in playback VTR 1 to our source tape 2 and playback VTR 2. 
Remember that a dissolve occurs when one video signal begins to fade out while a second video signal begins to fade in. These two overlapping signals are recorded onto a record tape. Our dissolve is depicted on this diagram. The bottom line represents our record tape. The upper left line represents our source tape in VTR1. The right line represents our source tape in VTR2. As you can see, our source tape 1 begins to fade out at its out point, and our source tape 2 begins to fade in at its end point. The duration time controls the rate at which these two signals overlap. The record deck records these overlapping signals. The first step in performing a dissolve is to set the duration of the dissolve using the numeric keypad and the enter button. The duration will now appear on the data monitor. Now select your in and out points for both of your source tapes and your record tapes. To select in and out points for your source tape 1, press the P1 button. Now shuttle through your source tape 1 and select your in point. Mark this point by pressing the mark in button. Now choose the out point for your source tape. Mark this point with the mark out button. These points will be indicated on the data monitor. To select the in and out points for your source tape 2, press the P2 button. Now shuttle through your source tape 2 and select your in point. Mark this point by pressing the mark in button. Now choose the out point for your source tape 2. Mark this point with the mark out button. Since you're dissolving to your source tape 2, an out point is not necessary as you can manually end the edit by pressing the red record button. However, the points you choose will be indicated on the data monitor. Also, select the endpoint on the record tape by pressing the RVTR button, shuttling through the tape and marking the endpoint with the mark in button. An out point for the edit on the record tape is optional. You can now preview the edit by pressing the preview button. If you're satisfied with the edit, press the record button and the edit will be performed and recorded. If you don't like the edit, go back and alter the in and out points and or the transition time. A wipe is very similar to a dissolve. To perform a wipe, press the wipe button on the user console. Then set a duration time and in and out points in the same way as for a dissolve. After entering this information, you must enter a wipe pattern. The wipe pattern buttons are located on the switcher. Press the button for the desired wipe and then press the enter button. The wipe can be previewed or simply recorded. For further information, on editing with the BVE-910, consult the BVE-910 manual or ask the studio engineers for assistance. Welcome to the Edit List Management module for the Sony BVE-910 editing system. In this section, you will learn how to make changes to the decision lists that are created by the BVE-910 during editing. The ability to modify the Edit Decision List, or EDL, is extremely important. A properly managed EDL will save time, frustration, and most of all, money. In order to begin, let's assume you've been editing and have accumulated a number of edits in the edit system memory. Edits are displayed towards the bottom of the data monitor in an area known as the EDL display area. At any given time, up to five lines of edit information will be displayed in this area. Each edit will contain the following information from left to right. The edit number, real number, edit type, transition type, pattern number, transition duration, the player's in and out points, and the recorder's in and out points. The first step in modifying edit data is to locate the particular edit you wish to change. Press the recall button on the keyboard by holding down the shift button and pressing 9. A function menu will be displayed at the bottom of the screen. This menu provides several methods for locating an edit. To get to the top of the EDL, press the F1 button. To get to the bottom, press F2. If you know the time code number of the edit you wish to modify, select the corresponding VCR and press F3. 
Enter the time code number and press enter. If you don't know the edit number or time code of the edit you wish to locate, you can find it by designating a VCR, scanning for the desired edit, and pressing F4. Once you locate the edit, you may wish to look at other edits located nearby. Pressing the backspace button will enable you to scan backwards through the EDL. To scan forward, press the forward space button. To exit the recall mode, press return or exit. Once you've located the edit you wish to modify, press the manage list button. A function menu will appear at the bottom of the screen. By pressing one of these function buttons, you can delete, insert, move, or copy an edit. In addition, you can recover a previously deleted edit or renumber the entire edit list. Let's look at each of these functions individually. Press F1 in order to delete an edit. The BV910 will ask you if you wish to ripple the list. Normally you will want to because this fills the gap left by the deleted edit. To ripple the list, press enter, otherwise press no. If you accidentally delete the wrong edit, there is a way to recover a deleted edit. This is only possible if the EDL auto renumber command has been set to the off position. Otherwise, deleted edits cannot be recovered. Assuming EDL auto renumber was set to the off position, press the manage list button. A new function menu will appear at the bottom of the screen. Press F5. Enter the deleted edit number using the numeric keys and press enter. To cancel this procedure anywhere in the middle, press no. So far, we've deleted and recovered edits. Next, let's look at how to copy an edit from one place in the EDL to another. First, locate the edit to be copied using the recall, backspace, or forward space buttons. Next, press manage list. A function menu will appear at the bottom of the screen. Press F2. The BV910 will ask where to insert the highlighted edit. Enter the edit number immediately prior to the place you would like the inserted edit and press enter. To ripple the EDL, press enter again. To move an edit from one place in the EDL to another, first, locate the edit to be moved using the recall, backspace, or forward space buttons. Next, press manage list and then F3. The BVE 910 will ask where you would like to move the highlighted edit to. Enter the edit number immediately preceding the desired location using the numeric buttons and press enter. Normally, the BVE 910 will automatically renumber all edits after performing a deletion, insertion, move, or copy. However, if the auto renumber function feature is turned off, you may wish to renumber manually. To perform a manual renumber, first press F8 in the Manage List function menu and then press Enter. So far, we've deleted, inserted, moved, copied, and renumbered edits. Once you have made all the corrections to the EDL, you must output the list to a floppy disk or to a printer. To do this, you'll need to use the dump command. Press the dump button. You will be asked where to output the list. To output to a floppy disk, press F1. To output to a printer, press F2. Next, you'll need to specify where in the list you want the output to begin. Normally, you'll want to start at the beginning. To start from the first edit, press Enter. Then the BVE 910 will ask where to stop the output. To specify the end of the list, press Enter. If for some reason you need to stop the dump before it finishes, press All Stop. To load an edit list from floppy disk into the EDL memory of the BVE 910, press the Load button. To select the floppy drive, press F1. Next, the BVE 910 will ask how the information will be read into memory. There are three choices. Pressing the F1 key will load the EDL without changing the numbers. Pressing the F2 key will load and automatically renumber the EDL to follow the numbers of the edits already in memory. Pressing F3 will clear anything currently in the EDL and replace it with the new edit list. To stop a load before it finishes, press the All Stop button. As you already know, every time you make an edit, the edit is stored in the EDL. Frequently, an editor will change his or her mind regarding the last edit made. There's an easy way to recall the last edit in order to make changes. Press the last edit button, and the last recorded edit will be displayed and made accessible for modification. This concludes the basic edit list management module for the BVE 910.